Hola, hola. Hi, everybody. Shelly Lozano here, your SA go to realtor, licensed real estate agent in the state of Texas with eXp Realty. And I'm wearing really colorful clothes today, and I did that intentionally because April is a huge month in San Antonio. Other than the San Antonio Spurs, we are also very well known for Fiesta, which is a month long celebration with just activities and, you know, stuff going on week by week. Today's video content is going to be based on the question, is it wise or is it good or bad to use the same agent that you found off a for sale sign to represent you as a buyer? You know, this has probably happened to you or, or maybe it's crossed your mind or to someone you know. You're driving down the street, you see a beautiful house and you're like, oh my gosh, let's call the agent. Honey, stop the car, reverse, go back there. And you call the agent and ask a few questions like how much is the home selling for how long has it been on the market is it a, how many bedrooms you know those types of questions and also another scenario could be you know you're on realtor.com truly or zillow you're looking at a house and you're like oh my god i like that house but i don't have a real estate agent so you scroll down to the list agent part and you call that agent is that the wisest thing to do well most people don't know but personally speaking, and this is very subjective and this is an opinion of mine, it's a very gray area. My advice is seek your own representation because this is what dual agency is. The scenario I just gave. Real estate agents can do one of three things in a transaction. You can represent the seller, A. B, you can represent the buyer, or C, you can represent both the seller or the buyer. Is that something that I'm comfortable with? Absolutely not, and I will tell you why. When I sit down with the seller, and you know, we need houses in, in San Antonio, we need, we need inventory. So we're out looking for people that are wanting to sell their home and trying to strike a deal with them. Like, hey, Mr. Seller, your house is worth this much. Um, I think it can sell really quickly. If you pay me X amount of money, I will market your home, put it on the market, do all the negotiating, and get you the most money in your pocket. So therefore, we have a fiduciary duty with this, with the seller. So who pays the agent's commission is the seller. So you, as a buyer, in the example, you will be a buyer in this situation, an agent is absolutely free to you. There are some agents that will charge some fees, but they will discuss that before y'all ever even talk. But for the most part, a buyer's agent is absolutely free. So why not have your own representation? Would you use the same attorney in a civil case? Probably not, because that attorney knows a little too much from both sides to really be fair. So that's what it really comes down to. And you will see the signs sometimes, the for sale signs, and it'll say like $1,500 rebate. So you're thinking, oh my gosh, well, let me call the agent on that sign. I'm going to say $1,500. So yeah, no, that seller has a fiduciary duty to the sell agent. Therefore, I'm sorry, to the seller. The seller may be selling for a reason. Maybe the seller's got cancer all of a sudden and has racked up all these bills and can no longer pay their mortgage. Maybe they're behind a little bit on the mortgage. Maybe they haven't paid their HOA. Maybe they hate their neighbors. God knows. But that information is shared with the list agent and also money information. That's why it's fiduciary. Like, you know, I just don't have the money to make repairs. I just don't have the money for this or that. And so suddenly the buyer comes in and the buyer is like, I only qualify for this much. I don't have money for closing costs. I this, I that. I want to buy a good house. It's my first house. So, you know, you've got that agent like, uh, you know, trying to be a mediator. Therefore, they cannot fully represent either side. They really are limited to just presenting factual information. But as far as advising goes, y'all are kind of getting, you know, the, the low end of that deal because they're not going to be able to do very much advising because they would be going against both of their clients. So it's a very gray area. You get me? Uh, so dual agency is when you represent both. So here's an example of where it can get really weird. Let's say I am the agent representing both sides. 
I have already talked with my seller when we signed a contract and promised them that I was going to do the best job possible to save them as much money and not have to have them spend so much to make repairs and you know that I have these negotiating skills right and then I'm also representing the buyer who wants a really good house this is their first house they don't want to buy a home and then a month in have to be making repairs right so we've negotiated the number of days for option period. This is what you do when you go under contract, right? Who's negotiating these days? Hello, I am the agent. You can ask for anywhere from three days, five days, seven days, 10 days. Normally you wanna do 10 unless there's a multiple offer or whatnot. But yeah, you want those days in order to get everything checked out in the home, get the inspection done. If the inspector finds that maybe the plumbing or the foundation needs further to be looked into, then you know you need time to find those guys, contractors to come out. And let's just say that you know, representing the seller and the buyer, the buyer's inspector finds a whole bunch of stuff wrong with the house. And so as an agent, as a buyer's agent, you're really supposed to advise your client who may not understand how to take apart this inspection report. They may need advice on what we, as a team should ask for what needs to be repaired, maybe bring the price down a little bit. So how am I gonna get use that information to go to the seller and be like, hey seller, this is what I need you to do. Because the seller's thinking, wait a minute, don't you work for me? So yeah, that's, that's a complicated situation to be in. And I wanna circle back to that pesky sign, the rebate sign that tries to lure you as a buyer to use that same agent on the list sign or the for sale sign. Think about it. Think really, really clearly about this. Say that if I were to be able to advise you as a buyer's agent fairly based on the inspection report, I could potentially be saving you thousands of dollars to have maybe the plumbing further looked at or the roof further looked at, you know, and that could be, like I said, a pretty penny that if you don't ask to get that taken care of before you take possession of the home, you may wind up having to pay for later down the line, thousands of dollars. So do you think $1,500 is going to suffice or is going to do it for me? No. Forget the $1,500. I want to make sure that I'm not spending thousands later down the line. And there are some agents out there that will tell you and swear up and down that they can handle dual agency, that they have lots of experience in the business and they've done them and they can do them all day long. I'm not buying it. What does dual agency, who does dual agency benefit at the end? Does it benefit the seller? I don't think so. Does it benefit the buyer? I don't think so. I don't think it represents either party, you know, fairly. Who it ends up benefiting is the agent because the agent is cashing in on both the seller and buyer commission. Now do you get where I'm going? So I just want to wrap up this video and suggest to you to go out and seek the best representation out there possible. Someone who is going to have your best interests at heart. And I will tell you, I have absolutely no problem as an agent on the opposite side. Say for example, if I list a home and you have questions about it, I have no problem referring you to a professional, an agent who can represent just you. Because I remember I'm on the other side of the deal. And if you see an agent sign and have questions about that, please call me. I can help you as a buyer's agent as well. I do both. I can represent you on the list side or on the sell side. I'd be absolutely happy to. I just am not comfortable doing both at this moment and never will. So please call me if you have any questions that are real estate involved. I'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one with you where we're more personal and can talk a little further about making real estate moves. You all have a great day. Thank you for watching. I hope this content brought value to you in some way and if not keep tuning in because perhaps the next video will bring you some information you did not know before.